Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. So today I wanted to bring you a mid-range Bruver Squirtle deck. I know I haven't uploaded a Squirtle deck in a while, and honestly the reason is I just... There, there wasn't a good Squirtle deck that I was not necessarily proud of, but I, I just couldn't find a deck that was decent. Uh, it felt like every time I would go to play something, I would just lose. It felt like the entire deck was built around Shiru, and then it fell apart if I either didn't draw Shiru and I wasn't going to run Call. Um, so usually I just played other factions, but now that we're in uh, Faction Challenge Week, it means uh, I am the Squirtle Faction Ambassador, which means, you know, I should probably play some Squirtle. So I uh, did some Squirtle today on stream. Um, was pleasantly su surprised. Uh, I worked on this deck uh, and another Ethne deck. Uh, this deck isn't too different from what I was playing before. The main difference is... I run both Urden and Professional. Usually I pick one or the other, but I decided to give it a shot and run both of them at the same time. And what I found was they're they're great. Um, very rarely do they have any kind of conflict with each other. They just, they help your worst matchup. Your worst matchups being big monsters. Um, you can use one like Urden in round one or Professional in round one on like a spear tip or something. Uh, and then you can use Urden to finish out round three. So I'll go through the deck really quickly. It's a pretty standard Bruver deck, nothing too crazy. Uh, starting from the top Bruver, you use Bruver with Shiru. Uh, that is like the only purpose of Bruver. Uh, every now and then you might need the extra points in round one. Don't be afraid to use like one proc. Um, in terms of when to use Shiru, I try to save it for round three. Sometimes I play it in round one against decks where winning round or going last in round three is important. These decks are... Uh, Big Monsters and Herald SK. These two decks having last say is super, super important. Uh, against Monsters, having that Urden is really important. Against SK, you're going to want that Professional or that Urden against uh, Dagger. So I don't mind playing Shiru against those decks in round ones because last say is everything. Um, Urden, as I mentioned before, very good against Big Monsters. Uh, we're in kind of a boost meta right now, so... Big Monsters, Dagger Herald, uh, even Shoop, sometimes Boost. Uh, Unicorn and Chironex are auto-included in every deck right now. Um, so you can almost always find Urden value. Worst case scenario, I'll reset my own row. So when you're playing this deck, really any Urden deck, you want a row stack just so that, um, well, assuming you have Urden in your hand, you row stack so that if they damage your units, because a lot of times they don't finish off the units, like uh, against a crack deck, right? On Wild Boar of the Sea, they're going to be wanting to hit a lot of damaged units. So what I'll do is I'll play uh, my Immune Dragon in the back, throw Unicorn buff on it, and then I'll stack everything else on the front row. This way, once they start damaging everything, uh, towards the end of the round, I'll play Urden, reset my row, and it completely denies Wild Boar of the Sea and usually ends up winning me the game. Professional, I mentioned earlier, very strong card right now. You can use Bruver and Archer Pings and Malayan Pings to line up. Um, very rarely does this card not get value. Worst, worst, worst case scenario is a 7. It's not that bad. Um, crack decks play Yetta BDM, so this card's really good against that. Yetta comes out at 6 or 12 if you have a unit higher. And with BDM, it goes up to 18. So all three of those you can kill with Professional. So very strong card. Shiro, we mentioned earlier, this is the strongest Skoyatel Gold card. Um, yeah, straightforward. Very strong with Bruver. Line up cards in round three. Use uh, Malayan and Archers to line uh, fives down to fours. Dragon, I love this card. I put it in most Squirtle decks. It's an immune card, and we're in a kind of controlish meta, so having this is very important. You can throw Unicorn buff on it, which I do most of the time, if not every time, um, because you want to play around cards like Regis and Professional. They can still earn in it, but you can't really play around that. Unicorn Cairo, auto include. Enraged the Frit uh, and Malayan, they're nice removal. I like them. Uh, they're nice eights for nines. Uh, this deck is mid range, which means it's it's good in like a medium ish to short round because you have a pretty good value cards that don't really need synergy or doesn't need other cards to synergize. Uh, it's the same reason why Panthers are in the deck. So really strong cards. Malayan has extra value in that you can ping uh, individual units, which allows you to ping like fives down the fours uh, and set up. Per potential uh shearers siren overall pretty good card um every now and then i use it to move a boosted unit uh into urden 
Uh, I also forgot to mention this. Another thing you can use Boover for, if they have two boosted units um, on separate rows, you can Boover one of them down uh, so you can get more earned value. Same goes for Siren. Witchers, the thinning's nice, straightforward. Um, one of the issues with Squirtle that it can have is uh, around one tempo, and Witchers definitely help with that. Panther, I mentioned earlier, is just a solid six for six. Uh, yeah, it sucks against Squirtle, so if you do play this deck and you queue into a Squirtle uh, matchup, I would hold on to the Panther in round one, just because most decks do run Witchers and Roach, so you're almost always going to get the Panther value. Uh, but once you get into round two and three, uh, I would suggest mulliganing them away, simply because playing a three doesn't feel great. Uh, and if they are playing um, non tall units, it's usually towards the end of the round, like a Professional or Urden, and usually you don't hold on to a Panther that long. Archers, very good card, uh, kills Neckers, kills Drowners, um, allows you to set up for Shiru, great card. Dragoon, it's a 4 for 4 movement, you can move uh, like a Magni Division or like any NR row locked card, very strong card, you can use it to set up um, Urden. Swordmaster, this card is one of those cards where it feels like it's always removed, but the reality is, is when it doesn't get removed, it's really, really good. So you, you play it anyways. It's good enough um, because it demands an answer. If they don't have an answer, it can get a lot of value and it can help you line up um, those Shirus and those professionals. Haka Healer is a one of simply because I needed another four provision card and this was the best one. Neophytes are nice proactive plays. Nothing special. It's just four points. Dwarven Skirmishers, uh, very strong against Swordmasters, very strong against any three strength uh, engine that your opponent plays on the melee row. And if you hit a Witcher, it's a four for four, it's not a big deal. Every now and then you hit something higher than a three and you get five value out of it, so that's awesome. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward deck. Uh, general game plan, try to win round one. You don't always have to win round one, so you, you need to know the matchups. Uh, against like a Shoop deck, you don't need to win round one because Shoop having last say isn't a big deal. Unless you think that they run uh, Isbel. If that's the case, you want to hold on to a Dragoon, Siren, or Brewer proc to move the uh, Isbel out of the way or out of the ranged row. Um, so that that matchup's okay if you don't win round one. Crack SK, you're usually okay because Crack SK, yeah, they like long rounds and having last say with Wild Boar of the Sea is good, but you have Erdin to reset the row, so it's not a big deal. Monsters, uh, big monsters, you, you want last say because you're not playing pitfall trap, so you can't really deny their last say. A, a smart woodland player um, might save Osrel into spear tip with woodland boost for a total of, what, 23 points? Um, that's a lot of points, especially when you're playing a removal deck. If your opponent has a 23-point finisher as their final play you're going to be in a tough spot. So having last say and being able to professionally earn in that is going to be very important. Uh, same goes for a Daryl, Daryl, Dagger Herald deck. Um, it's not as bad. Um, some of the times, yeah, you, you, you want last say. So I would say Monsters and a Herald deck are the two primary decks where you want to have last say. So pushing for that round one is going to be more important. Mirror matches for Scoyatel, having last say is pretty important. Uh, generally, uh, assuming both players draw Shiru, generally the person who I last say usually wins because you just clear more units with your Shiru than their Shiru. So in a Bruver Mirror matchup, you you want last say. So you're going to want to push round one. So those are probably the three uh, matchups. NR doesn't matter. Um, Depends on the SK. If it's Ice, it's not a big deal. You don't have to go last because no one's playing Hemdall. You don't need to reset anything. Um, what else is there? I guess that's really it. Uh, Nilfgaard is really only Shoop. Shoop Nilfgaard is the only thing. So yeah, um, those three decks. Um, Big Monsters, Herald SK, and Mirror matchups are the matchups you're going to want to be pushing in round one. Uh, and You almost always want to try to win those rounds. Uh, other matchups, don't bother. Uh, it's not worth going crazy and blowing everything to win the round. In terms of what to play in round one, uh, I usually don't mind playing Unicorn and Chironex in round one. Uh, I play Shiru in round one if it's one of those three matchups and I need to win the round. Um, I almost never play the Immune Dragon. I love this card. I like saving it for round three. So if you can avoid playing this card, try to do so uh, because most decks have some form of damage. Uh, an Immune Target that 
you know, can't touch. So, yeah, pretty fun deck. It's a nice mid-range list. Um, if you're ambitious enough to click on Skoyata for the uh, faction challenge, <laughs> good luck. Um, this this is a solid Brewer deck. Um, I, I say ambitious because the best decks or the best factions in the game right now are Nilfgaard with them here, Shoop, and either Herald or Crack SK. And, like, big monsters somewhere in there. So th those are the top three factions right now, in my opinion. NR and Scoyotel are kind of at the bottom, but eh, whatever. It is what it is. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Why am I being gnomed? Oh, should we drop the gnome? I completely forgot about it. Pretty good hand. What is the purpose of the gnome? He holds the uh, the badge because if if we get rid of the gnome, then the badge falls. So we we, we wouldn't want that, right? So nope, not that gnome. We need we need the gnome to hold the badge. Very important. Does that make sense, chat? Yes! Okay, good. I'm glad it makes sense. So we play no crushing. So... What does that mean? Just play cards. Leader reveal socked? What do you mean? Oh, because we didn't get the actual ability? I mean, it's better than nothing. Having art is never... I mean, it's something. Something is better than nothing, right? Hey, listen here. Usually. Listen well. Give us information on what he does. Um, my guess is as to why they don't want to do that is maybe they don't have it finalized yet. We ought to help one or the other. We've had the art from Thornbreaker. Yeah, but you didn't know how many provisions it costed. Or gave, I guess. The better way to say it. Is it worth playing Frangilla? No. No, don't do it. It'll just die. There's too many locks. No, don't do it. It's not worth it. 16 provisions more than base equals shitty ability. What if it interacted with spies? What if it was... How would it interact with spies? How do you make a new leader interact with spy Nilfgaard chat? Go. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. <laughs> what spies? <laughs> exactly. Alright, new leader. Spawn spies into your deck. We have to pass. It sucks, but we're not gonna get out of this round on even. Or a card up. Yeah, it blows, but it's fine. So passing on five, once again, very important. If we pass on four, we lose the game. I mean, all these cards are good. We keep this so that when he dry passes, we play it. 
Unless we think we can cycle a different bronze. Okay. He'll just dry pass. Well, he might play one card and then dry pass. Uh, he actually doesn't have to. He can bleed me to zero if he wants. Blood. Blood everywhere. It's pretty good. Slaughter them to a man. Peace with humans, I buy thus. I don't mind going down a card. Here's the rationale. My shearer will get a lot of value. So I'm not too concerned. War at last! Ha <laughs> ha! War, my beloved! You should play Unicorn and boost some more Quirk. I like that play. Image deck that play one... Imagine deck that plays one spy buffer and then leader steals it. Or you could just play Regis. Time for a beating! Is it too obvious if I... Nah, I should just Shiru. I don't want to make it too obvious. Oh, how lovely you Especially because I have a bunch of fours in my hand. Like... Playing a frit and pinging down work bugs just it, it it's so blatantly obvious that it's just not correct. Leader with destroy ability is OP. So like Scorch, so Francesca. Okay, so we got out. That's good. Um, we lost our Shiru, which is unfortunate, but we have a really nice gold hand. We're looking for a Uni Arden. Uni? Let's finish it off with a nice Unicorn. Alright, so we have zero boosting, so we row stack front row really hard, I think. So row stacking front row, what does that do for me? It makes it so that my Urden gets good value. So we soup. 17 years. Thank you so much, Nasher. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So if he's pinging for damage, I actually wanted to get pinged on this, right? Because then the damage means nothing. It also denies crack for one turn, which is kind of cute. The guns are with us. All right, now we play the Neos. I shall not fail. I don't think he plays Lacerate. Lacerate's usually overkill, from my experience. Yeah, we're just gonna heavy row stack on front. Because generally they, right, 90% of Herald decks has um, Wild War the Sea as finisher. Um, so they usually bring every card down and then go off.
Generally, these decks also play, um... Not that. That's not a normal card. So he can crack his own cards, but I don't think he would do that. Because if it hits this or this, you're sad. But he could. Uh, as I was saying, a lot of these decks play like Yetta and BDM. So we save Professional for Yetta BDM. If you were a Gwen card, what would your voice line be? I don't know, whatever CDPR wants it to be. Arrakis Venom? Okay. Insane value? Okay, I, I'd be okay with that or don't touch my shit. I like those. I say that a decent amount. What? You play two Arrakis Venom? You're coming with me, you better alive. What? <laughs> I'm super confused. Not your lucky day. So the only reason that's correct is if his last two cards are BDM and uh, Yetta. And he's playing around Erdin. Let's get this over with. Player on Kigney. You need a pretty good card here. You get one point off of leader. Kill a skirm, yeah. I don't know, I mean I can play around Gigney, it doesn't hurt to play around it. I don't know, that's just that's the rationale I'm giving you for why I moved the thingy. It doesn't play around Erden, but Erden we already win, so it's not a big deal. I don't know. I saw the 20 and was like, all right, I can say that we're playing around Gigney. It makes us look like we're a better player, right? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. I mean, you might as well play around it. It can't hurt. Pumpkin leader ability, turn a card in your hand into Scorcher Epidemic. Do you get to do that once per round? I'll take that. I'm down for that ability. That That's a true pumpkin ability. One time is not very good. That would be so broken though. Create three scorches. Ugh. Ugh. It'd be so fun though. I mean, not for my opponent. My opponent would bloody hate it, but I would enjoy myself. I'm in no mood to talk. All right, so this is either Pop-Tart, Slizzard. Slizzard, we auto win because of Erdin. Pop-Tart is dicey. If we draw Shiru, we auto win. Uh, and then the uh, last one is not seeing a lot of play. What's the last one? Emworth. I don't mind serenading this. Humans are not to be trusted. Um, because Neckers we kill, Necker Warrior we kill, 
So I don't think we're going to have any other lock targets that we necessarily need this on. What faction did you choose for faction challenge? Uh, Squayatal. Big surprise, I know. I'm going to take this. Because Neckers are pretty common, and saving this for Neckers feels worth it. So we're losing a point, but... A bit of respect. You're not talking to guilt. If he TAs, he wants to get out. Either way, we're playing this. I mean, we can easily do that in three cards. May your sword and arm be one. Can we do this in two? Four, five, plus eight, thirteen? Yeah, we're fine. Slaughter them to a man! This is only incorrect if he plays another two. The only other two is Drowner, and if he's playing Drowner, he's losing a point on Swordmaster, which means I don't care. We're getting to the point where Neckers are useless, so I don't think I'll mind playing this. Can we keep up with this? I can keep up with two River procs. Well, more with this. Or fewer, I should say. I apologize, I'm not talking. I was just thinking. Yeah, I just, yeah, you have to keep staying up in points. It's really nice of him, he played a four. Because we get a free two points on him with Archer. If he had passed a turn prior, we would have had, okay, bye. That's way too big, I can't deal with that. It's been fun. All right, I'm very glad I pushed. If I didn't push, we would have gotten smashed by these two cards next round. These two cards end the game for me next round. I can't deal with a 10 and a 13 if I don't draw professional. Oh. Oh? Okay, Pumpkin, too many good cards. Um, I need you to uh, take it down a notch. No, pumpkins. Because <laughs> he's drive passing, which means I need to play a shitty card. All right, we're going to need that dragon back. All right, we, we need... Give me... And I need Shiru. 
Dragon, Shiru, or Fred off the top. All three. Shiru's the most important because it's my only way of killing Pop-Tart. Alright, all three please, thank you. Okay, we drew one, the worst one. Panther's not bad, the problem is this is proactive and this is not, so we get rid of this. Quite literally the only card that matters in this matchup. Um, well that sucks. Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh. Dragon's really good, but Shiru Shiru kills Pop Tart, and killing Pop Tart is pretty important. Ask CDPR to give you leader info? No, I mean, my guess is when they want to reveal, uh, like, card abilities, they'll reveal them. Right, because we already have the art for it. I mean, we might be okay. If we kill everything, it's just Pop-Tart as final card. I'm not killing that. I'll just leave it be, because we can always reset it. It's okay, we get professional value next turn. I don't know what to do. He's playing around Shiru. Oh. You think? Petri filter? Oh, Petri's filter would suck for me. If his last card is Petru's filter, yeah. Well, if it was Petru's filter, he would have played it already because it's not a very difficult card to play. <laughs> It's not a pet use filter. I'm not gonna try to steal it. I'm just gonna take my value. There's no reason to be greedy. His best possible card is a 15 point card. And I don't think I'm worried about a 15 point card. Well, the double, the double Geralt's are really, I cannot speak today. The double Geralt's are working pretty well.